Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. Uh, it's another beautiful spring day here in Tokyo but I'm making a video indoors today as my wife and daughter are out and about and I thought it would be a good time to make an instructional video. Uh, today's video is going to be showing you how to uh, refurbish or renovate an old Yashica Electro 35 rangefinder camera. Uh, the camera I'm working on today is actually a Yashica GSN but uh, pretty much everything I do to this camera applies to the earlier GS or Electro 35 cameras as well as the black cameras, the GT and the GTN. There are some minor differences in, uh, in these cameras when you are servicing them and I'll point those out as we go along. You don't need a lot of tools to do the, the job on this camera. The first and most important tool you'll need is a small Phillips head screwdriver. You'll also need a small slotted screwdriver. This one I believe is maybe uh, two millimeters wide. Uh, you'll need a pair of uh, side cutters. That's what my junior high school shop teacher used to call them. In high school we called them dykes and these were kind of like the foundation for a lot of bad jokes in those days. You'll need a pointed spanner or if you don't have a pointed spanner you can use a pair of needle nose pliers with a, a long nose on them and if you, the points aren't sharp enough on your needle nose pliers you can sharpen them a little bit more with a file. Uh, you can also use a pair of tweezers with sharp points for uh, many of the things which uh, this tool would be required for. Another important thing to have is a battery uh, that you know is in good condition and is charged. I'm using a 4LR44 battery with an adapter. You can use something similar. Um, you can make an adapter quite easily with something like a chapstick tube and some uh, aluminum foil. Or you can buy the Excel battery which Amazon sells, which fits uh, the Ashika Electro 35 cameras without an adapter. You'll also need some uh, clean cotton swabs and some lens cleaning fluid. Now I just received this camera and I don't know much about it. It's in fairly good shape from the looks of it. It's a little bit dirty but um, and much cleaner than uh, the usual one which I receive. Uh, when I take get one of these cameras I take a look at it and I look for obvious damage on the outside for dents and dings and things like that. And I'll look on the bottom and I'll usually be looking for something like uh, corrosion around the battery cap. Uh, that's usually a bad sign. It's not as bad on the uh, Yashica Electro 35 as it is on some of the other cameras, but um, yeah, it's something I look for. It, uh, it, it means that the battery is probably leaking and might have caused damage on the inside. I'll also take a look at the lens. Uh, usually uh, if there's any obvious fungus or haze you can tell it immediately by looking at it. And then I'll open up the back door and take a look at the inside. And uh, not so bad here. Um, the light seals are a little bit uh, gummy, but uh, not all dusty or really nasty. Uh, the back of the lens looks okay. I don't see any uh, obvious uh, fungus or anything inside there, but uh, we'll go ahead and clean that up anyway. Uh, the next step that I go through when looking at one of these cameras is I'll take off the battery cap. These can sometimes be a little tricky to get off. Uh, if there's corrosion holding them on, they can be almost impossible to get off. To loosen them up, I'll put a little bit of lacquer thinner around the outside and let it sit for a little while and then try to turn it loose. If a coin won't turn it loose, uh, the two vent caps here you can stick in the tips to a pointed spanner and that'll give you a little bit more leverage to take it out. And if worse comes to worse, you can remove the entire cover on the bottom by taking out these two Phillips screws. And you can use a pair of vice grips or something similar and clamp on the front and back of the battery cap at the same time and then just twist the bottom cover and that will usually get the battery cap off. Okay, and that's really nice. This uh, cap is in really good condition. There's no corrosion at all on it and the positive sticker uh, is still intact uh, on it. And looking inside, I don't see any corrosion inside the battery chamber. The spring looks nice and clean. And the sticker is still inside. Uh, the one which shows the polarity. You have uh, two different ones. I guess uh, these stickers sometimes come out, but the one stuck on the inside, the yellow one, uh, usually stays in place. So I'll go ahead and I'll take my uh, battery and adapter and I'll install it. And I'll make sure that the positive side or the red side of the battery points toward the battery cap. 
And I'll usually start this on with my fingers. Okay. All right, the next step is to uh, check the battery, the battery switch, and uh, the battery check light bulb. Uh, when I push on the red button on the back, a green light should illuminate in the film counter. And that, that works, that's in good condition. Uh, the next thing I'll do is <clears throat> I will check the, the lamps for the meter and also to see if the meter works. So the first thing I'll do is I'll, I'll open the aperture all the way and I'll wind the camera and I'll depress the shutter and as you can see the, the red lamp is illuminating and that means that uh, there's too much light. The next thing I'll do is I'll close the aperture and maybe cover up the meter window here and I'll push again and the slow lamp is coming on so all that is a good sign that means that uh, that all the lamps appear to be working uh, just because a lamp isn't working either the battery check lamp or uh, the meter lamps aren't working doesn't mean that the camera doesn't work uh, these use a very simple uh, incandescent bulb which can burn out like any other light bulb so uh, it, the camera may still work if any of these bulbs are not working the only important lamp, or the most important lamp, would be the overlamp, which lets you know that uh, there's too much light for the shutter, and the shutter speed isn't fast enough to give you an exposure. Uh, in, in this case, if you don't stop down the lens, uh, your images are going to come out overexposed, and without this warning lamp, there's no warning to let you know that it is overexposed. The yellow lamp is just uh, mainly to let you know that the shutter speed is really slow and there's a risk of the image blurring. Uh, the, the shutters will stay open as long as necessary to get an accurate exposure, whether that's uh, 30 seconds or a minute or longer. So uh, you know, there's no low-end shutter limit on these, or at least you know, no, uh, no unrealistic limit, I guess. So this is really the most important bulb to have working. Uh, if any of these bulbs are burned out, you can replace them with bulbs from another uh, Yashica donor camera. You can find uh, non-working Yashica Electro 35 cameras all the time for $10 or less. Uh, you might be able to find the bulbs on Amazon uh, in other countries, though I haven't been able to find them here in Japan. So anyway, uh, now we know that uh, uh, the electronics and everything in this camera are basically in good condition. So uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on the second step, and that is going to be uh, cleaning out the viewfinder and rangefinder system on the Ashika uh, Electro 35 camera. And to start with, we're going to take the pointed spanner and we're going to remove the uh, film winding and shutter charging lever. So take the points of the spanner or tweezers or whatever uh, type of tool you have and just remove the screw. Underneath the screw you'll find a compression washer and the charging lever. I usually leave these together in one place. Underneath that will be a, a spacer with a guide hole on the bottom. When the camera is pointed away from you, the guide hole should be toward the rear at about the 4 o'clock position. Uh, the next thing we must do before we remove the top cover is remove the ASA dial or film speed adjusting dial. So using the pointy spanners or tweezers, uh, remove the screw on the top. And there were four parts uh, to this dial. First is the screw. Uh, next is the black disc, which shows the different film speeds. Underneath that is a small compression washer. And below that is the adjusting dial itself. So I set these all together off to the side. The next thing I'll do is I'll remove the film rewind knob, so I'll go ahead and open the film door, uh, set the camera nose down, take my screwdriver and put it between the forks here in the uh, film chamber and twist off the knob. These knobs always come with the washer underneath, so uh, make sure not to misplace the washer when you take off the knob. If yours doesn't have a washer, you should try to find something, uh, a washer or something to act as a spacer between the knob and the top cover. Otherwise, when you are turning the, the rewind knob, it might rub or scratch on the top cover. We take the Phillips screwdriver again and remove the screws which hold on the top cover. 
there are five screws here. Uh, three hold on the top cover and two hold on this plastic bezel around the battery check switch. Put all the screws together. Uh, then I will remove the, the two screws on the battery check switch. And I'll put those together off to the side. And all that remains to do now is to lift off the top cover. In most cases, the top cover just simply lifts off. You just pull it right up off the camera, but uh, sometimes it doesn't come off so easily. Uh, when these cameras were uh, manufactured and the leatherette was glued on them and then the top covers were put on, sometimes the glue hadn't dried all the way. And the top cover manages to find itself glued to the camera and it can be uh, quite difficult to remove. Uh, the way to do it is uh, holding the camera like this uh, with the bottom in the palms of your hands. You rock the top cover with your thumbs and just keep rocking it back and forth until it works loose and pops off. So uh, when you lift off the top cover, uh, you'll see everything which is underneath. Uh, there's a wire which connects the top cover. This uh, goes to the flash sync uh, uh, socket and uh, also runs to the hot shoe on the top. Uh, be careful not to break this wire, but if you do, it's usually quite easy to solder it back in place if you have a soldering gun handy. Uh, we have to remove this. This one's quite loose already, but remove this dust cover from over the lens mechanism on the rangefinder. And once the top cover is off, the first thing I will take a look at is the uh, pod or POD or pad or whatever people call it, the pad of death. And that's this little urethane thing. I don't know how close I can get this to the camera, but maybe you can see the tip of the screwdriver uh, pointing at it. There's a little piece of kind of an orangish yellowish colored uh, urethane and this fits between uh, the shutter button and uh, and the switch mechanism for the shutter on the bottom. This pad is necessary for a couple of reasons. Uh, first it absorbs the shock when you fire the shutter and the switch comes back up to the top of its travel and it also maintains a, a distance, uh, a proper clearance between uh, the shutter button and the switch. If the pad is deteriorated, the clearance is not going to be correct and the uh, uh, shutter is not going to fire uh, correctly. It'll be erratic if it works at all. So if this happens to be the case, the camera you're working on does not have an intact uh, uh, POD or PAD, uh, it has to be replaced. Uh, this one is in good condition. It's, it looks like uh, brand new, which is you know pretty normal in the Ashika GSNs. They made uh, these pads with much improved materials in these, especially the later ones. But uh, if it's bad, you have to replace it. And uh, a tool I use to replace it, I need a couple of things. I need um, my uh, slotted screwdriver, and I need a thing which looks kind of like a, a scraper used in a dentist office to clean your teeth. What I'll do is I'll hold the camera and using the, the tip of the scraper, I will reach under, underneath and I will scrape off all the old uh, urethane material. I'm cleaning it off as much as I can and getting it really, really clean. And then uh, once I have it reasonably clean, I'll take a cotton swab and I'll bend over the tip so I can fit it underneath. And I'll wet it with a little bit of lacquer thinner or lighter fluid or some kind of solvent and clean as much of the old uh, glue and POD material as I can. When I replace the POD, uh, sometimes I have uh, the original uh, material uh, pads on hand, sometimes I don't. Uh, if I don't, it's not difficult to make another one. I can use a piece of uh, rubber lens hood material. Uh, the proper uh, proportions should be about, uh, about two millimeters uh, tall by about four millimeters wide by about three millimeters deep. And it doesn't have to be exact. It can be off uh, half a millimeter or so and the camera will still work properly. It doesn't have to be very exact. If you don't have rubber, you can use a piece of leather which is in good condition. And actually in my experience, I've come across these old cameras which where someone has replaced the, the POD with leather and uh, it works. 
So I'll go ahead and I'll scrape all the stuff off and uh, get it nice and clean. And uh, I'll take the new POD material, uh, the pod that I've cut out, and I'll put some glue on one side of it and a little bit on the side. And then using, I'll attach the POD to my scraper. So it's kind of uh, a little bit glued to this. And with the glue, I can kind of fish it in in between. And there's some wires here which run to the meter. I can squeeze these out a little bit of the way so I can fit the POD inside and tuck it up against the bracket where it's supposed to sit. Uh, once I have it in place, I'll go ahead and like wind the charging lever a little bit. And that'll cause the uh, switch to pop back up and it will press against the pod and push it up against the bottom of the shutter switch uh, in the plate. That'll hold it in place. And if it needs any minor adjustment, I can do it now just to get it into the right spot. And then I'll go ahead and start working on the rest of the camera while it dries. It's not that really difficult to change uh, the POD or pad inside the Ashika Electro 35 camera. Uh, you do not have to take off the lens assembly or strip the camera down to the bare components to do it. All you really have to do is just scrape it out and use a couple of precision or small tools just to work it in there. Uh, if you're unlucky, it might fall down and, and end up somewhere else. You'll just have to be very patient and try to use something, toothpicks or whatever, to get it back out and try again. But uh, eventually you'll be able to get it back together. All right. So uh, that ends this part. So let's go ahead and take a break for a moment and then we'll continue by cleaning out the viewfinder and rangefinder. All right, so this is the, the third part in this particular video and this will deal with uh, cleaning out and adjusting the viewfinder and rangefinder. Uh, there are basically two kinds of top covers for the Ashika Electro 35 series, uh, an, earlier ser an earlier cover and a later cover. The later cover has a plastic bezel around the viewfinder window and meter window. The earlier ones have a metal bezel. It's easy to tell what kind you have just by tap, you know, tapping it. And the metal bezel and plastic bezel are held in the top cover in different ways. Uh, when I clean one of these cameras, I like to remove the glass uh, from the top cover so I can get it properly cleaned. Uh, it's kind of difficult to get into all the uh, nooks and crannies and an area around the viewfinder mask in the back. And though you can get it really clean and uh, so you can you know, use the camera quite well, it won't be as clean as if you remove this at glass to clean it. The later cameras, the later GS and GSN cameras, uh, the bezel is held in with uh, melted plastic. It's pushed through and then heat is applied and pressed down and that keeps it in place. The earlier cameras, uh, the bezel is placed in the front of the camera and pushed all the way in and then a metal shim is pressed into a couple of slots here which hold it in place. So uh, to remove the bezel from the earlier cameras, you have to take a screwdriver with a small point and put it behind the bezel and pry outwards or, you know, until I guess the, the little uh, sheet metal thing, you know, you pull it out and that will allow the bezel to come out. Uh, there's glue around it a little bit sometimes, so you might have to play with a little bit to get it all the way out, but it will pop out. And once you have the metal bezel out, there are two pieces. The, the shiny uh, coated uh, metal part on the front and then a black steel part on the back. Uh, this black steel part is held in with the Phillips screw. You, move, you remove the Phillips screw, take them apart, and the glass will come out and you can easily clean it. When you put the glass back in, make sure that you have it facing the right way. Uh, more than once or twice, I have uh, replaced the glass in the front and got the camera ready to go. And at the last minute, I noticed that the glass is on backwards and it has kind of like a frosty uh, finish on the outside instead of being glossy. So that means I have to take the camera all the way back apart, pull out the glass, turn it around and put it back together. So uh, always check everything, every repair you do, go by, step by step and make sure that uh, every step is done correctly. When you put back the glass, make sure that it's in the right way. Since this is a GSN and it's held in with the glass which has been melted down, I will use my side cutters or dikes and I will cut out the plastic which is folded over the black metal part. And then I can just slide it out like so. And then the glass on the inside should slide out like so. And 
Next thing I want to do is I want to clean the glass. So I'll take my uh, lens cleaning fluid. I'll apply a lot generously and to the front and back and I get very close to the corners because that tends to be where the worst of the, the dirt and nastiness is. Uh, sometimes there's some kind of etching or marks on the glass and it won't clean off easily if you are using lens cleaning fluid. Uh, if this is the case, uh, I can often get these marks out with a little bit of metal polish applied to the end of a cotton swab. I just rub it on and it usually removes the marks and gives me a nice shiny and clear surface. It's also good for removing any deterioration on optical plastic. Uh, in this case it came out pretty well and I'll make sure to rub off any uh, debris or fibers which you know, still manage to stick on these even though I use micro microfiber cloths. Alright, and I'll replace the glass now making sure that uh, the frosted part with the little diamond is toward the center of the camera and that the matte side is facing inside and not outside. I'll slide that back into place. I'll attempt to slide it back into place. Okay, there it goes. And then I'll go ahead and install this uh, bezel or mask which goes on the inside. What I'll do is I'll bend it so it's bowed out uh, actually bowed to where uh, the ends are closer and uh, so the ends are closer and the top bubbles out just a little bit. I do that so when I uh, slide the bezel back in or I guess the mask is a better uh, term for it. When it goes back in it sits flush against the plastic and allows me a, a good close surface. And what I do next, uh, since I, I've already cut off the plastic, I can't melt new plastic on top of it. So what I do is I use my uh, a Bondo G17 glue, which is really popular in camera shops here in Japan. And I'll apply this glue along the bezel and along the plastic. And that's all there is to it. Uh, the next step now is to clean out the viewfinder and rangefinder assembly. So I'll go ahead and uh, take my cotton swabs. And the first thing I do is I'll, I'll start on the front. And I like to do this with uh, like a light source behind me which reflects off the glass. And that allows me to see very well if, there's, uh, if the glass surface is really clean and doesn't have any marks or fingerprints or anything like that on it. When you clean with a cotton swab, when you, uh, when you do the initial cleaning, it's going to leave kind of a, a haze and a deteriorate, or, you know, I guess small cotton particles. It always does that uh, at first. You continue, but if you continue rubbing and cleaning, the particles come off and leave you a clean surface. So uh, make sure to clean very, very thoroughly and uh, dry it off very, very thoroughly. I'm using the light behind me. Okay, that's quite nice. The next thing I want to do is I want to clean on the inside. And I want to be able to reach the, the corners and places like that. So what I'll do is I'll take uh, a pair of uh, pliers like so. And I'll take a cotton swab and I'll kind of pinch it. Making kind of a, a sharper uh, tip, which I can fit into tighter places than just an ordinary cotton swab. And I'll apply just a little bit of cleaning fluid. And how much cleaning fluid you need depends on how nasty it is. If it's clean, just a little bit works, just enough to get it wet. Okay, and I've got the screen in front of me, video screen, and I look through it, and it's it's quite nice. Okay, I get another swab for the other half. And now I'll do the beam splitting mirror. The beam splitting mirror in the Yashica Electro cameras is, is quite durable and not easy to uh, rub off when you are cleaning. Uh, these are 
very high quality cameras for the price. I guess that's uh, why Yashica sold so many of them. Other cameras like this, uh, the quality of the glass and the components is not very high and things are easily marked or damaged when you're trying to clean, so you have to take extra care. Uh, the Ashikas are not. Whenever I come across these cameras which cannot be fixed, which is unfortunately more uh, often than uh, I would like, uh, I, I always take out the beam splitting mirrors and I keep these as spares to use in other cameras. They're quite large and I can, with a little bit of cutting, I can usually make these fit in other cameras. And the Ashika beam splitting mirrors are very high quality and uh, really they add a lot of contrast. So if I take uh, uh, other cameras, Minolta's or things like that, which tend to have not as good uh, beam splitting mirrors, I'll replace them with the ones from the Ashika and it makes a big difference in how easy the camera is to uh, focus and operate. And I want to next clean the lens which reflects the frame lines on the viewfinder. That way the, uh, frame, line, the uh, frame lines look extra bright. So I'll go ahead and clean around this by making sure that the Q-tip is flat. And then I'll clean the mirror which sits behind frame line mask and then uh, clean the window behind where the image is reflected through now the more you pay attention to these steps uh, the better the results you'll get when you are uh, using the camera it make it much easier to uh, focus and operate it Next thing I want to do is I want to clean inside uh, the uh, viewfinder window on the back and it's kind of recessed so, so to get it properly clean I bend over the cotton swabs it's a 90 degree angle like so and wet the tip a little bit and this camera is in very good condition, it has very little haze or dirt or anything like that on the inside. It looks very nice. It wasn't used very much or, or it wasn't abused I should say. And with this last uh, cotton swab the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, clean the light meter window. You want this to be clean so that you get uh, uh, all the light shining on the light meter which can only help the accuracy of the light meter system. All right, and that's everything there. Um, I use a blow brush or some uh, canned air to make sure to blow out any dust. And the next thing I have to do is I have to uh, put this dust cover back on. Uh, this is glued on. When you're gluing anything inside a camera, um, I like to follow the old advice that uh, less is more. Do not use too much glue. Uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, uh, one of these days someone may have to fix the camera again and if you use a whole lot of glue to uh, put things back together it's going to be much more difficult to fix in the future. And for another reason, especially in this particular part here, uh, if you use too much glue and it comes out on the front or back when you slide the top cover back on the camera it tends to drag the glue right in front of the glass. Uh, if it does it on the back side, it's no big deal, you can clean it off, but if it drags it on the front side, it means you've got to lift off the cover to get the glue out, and it's, it's very complicated. So, yeah, less is more when it comes to using glue. Alright, so everything is uh, together, and the next step would be adjusting the viewfinder and rangefinder. There are two adjusting screws to do the job. The first is for the horizontal adjustment, and that is located right here. Uh, if you look through, of course the top cover here has a, a shoe for the flash and if you remove the cover uh, like so, there's an access hole right here and the screwdriver uh, fits into, uh, into this chamber where the uh, rangefinder assembly is and there's a screw there with a plus head on it. Not a, not a plus head like on the Phillips screwdriver, but a, a slotted screw, but in the shape of a plus. 
and with a slotted screwdriver you engage whichever part of the plus you is easiest for you and you turn it one way or the other to adjust the horizontal adjustment. The vertical adjustment is done by a small screw which is located here right next to the battery check switch. If you have the battery check button which you can push in and out and maybe you see the light blinking there. Uh, just to the left of that is a small screw right behind the uh, rangefinder mirror. You turn that one way or the other to do the vertical adjustment. When the camera is assembled to access this, you would uh, remove this uh, black plastic battery check light. Okay, so now we are ready to put the camera back together. Uh, what I, The first thing I'll do is I'll wrap this uh, flash sync wire around so it doesn't bind on anything. And I'll put the cover down gently. Uh, these covers are made out of uh, stamped brass and the fit is actually usually pretty precise but sometimes it'll be a little bit off so you might have to play with it a little bit to get it uh, to sit down exactly. And I'll take my uh, slotted or excuse me Phillips screwdriver and I'll start by putting in the the three screws which hold on the body. On the silver ca cameras the screws are silver, on black cameras they are black. The silver ones make it easy because there are three silver screws for the top cover and two black ones for this uh, battery uh, check lamp cover. But when the screws are all black, like if you have a GTN or GT or something, you have to make sure to put the screws separately because uh, the screws which hold this on are smaller than the screws which hold on the top cover. Okay, so the three screws are on. I'll go ahead and replace the cover, uh, put the uh, battery check button inside. And I'll, make, I'll leave the camera sitting like this, so I don't have to worry about the uh, button falling inside the camera and getting lost. I'll hold it on with my thumb so it doesn't wander or anything come loose, and I'll go ahead and put in one screw. Uh, I magnetize these uh, screwdriver tips uh, so it makes it easier to catch the screws and put them in. I like to play the guitar and sitting next to me I've got a big Fender Twin Reverb amplifier and from time to time I'll just touch one of the magnets on the speakers and it makes it nice and uh, magnetic for doing this kind of work. Alright, uh, next step is to replace the uh, film rewind knob. So I'll go ahead and I'll take the washer and I'll put it on the top and put the threads on there. and. I'll go ahead and lift it up, open the door, uh, put the screwdriver through the fork, and tighten it, and that part's done. The next step is to uh, put in the film speed dial. What you do is you put it on and there's a hole in the side which uh, uh, engages the light meter, or excuse me, the Oh, I guess the light meter on the inside and I turn it all the way to the left and if you're sitting behind the camera as I am uh, this should be uh, the, in, the brass pin should be at the nine o'clock position and the red mark on the dial should be at around the, the five or five thirty position. The next thing you want to do is take this little compression washer and you want to put it precisely in the center so that the hole goes around uh, you know, the pin in the center. You do not want this to become pinched uh, between the disc and the dial because if it does then the disc will move as well as the dial. What you want to do is you want to be able to turn the dial but the disc doesn't move. So I'll drop that on and then I'll put in the screw and then I'll take my uh, pointed spanner and I'll turn in the screw. When I have the screw turned in a little bit of a ways I'll use my uh, other screwdriver to turn the black dial around until the number 1000 is lined up with the red mark. So if this is turned all the way to the left that should have the dial set at uh, ISO 1000 and so uh, you should have the disc lined up showing 1000 at the red mark. Okay. 
and there's a small hole on the disc which uh, allows you to grasp it with a tool and hold the disc in place as you are tightening the screw. Okay, all right, that's in place, and if it works properly, if I turn the dial, the dial should turn and the disc should not. All right, success. I usually set it to uh, ISO 200, that way I know that I've got, uh, I've got it done. All right, the next thing I'll do is I'll replace the uh, film winding and shutter charging lever. So I'll put the spacer on here with the hole at the five o'clock position uh, if I'm looking at the camera from behind. I'll go ahead and set the lever on top. The compression washer goes on top of that and then the screw goes on top of that. Snug it with my fingers and tighten a little bit with the wrench. And that's it. It's nice and clean. Um, in the future, if you do need to make any adjustments uh, to the rangefinder or such, you can pry up uh, the shoe here to slide it back to access the uh, horizontal adjustment. Or you can remove the cover back here to do the vertical adjustment. All right. So that finishes this part of the video. The next part is going to be cleaning the lens assembly. So a very important part. I'll be right back with that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started at uh, cleaning out the lens. And the first thing we want to do, we want to make sure that the camera has a battery in it and that the battery works. We know that's the case. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the selector dial on the lens to the B or bulb setting and I'll open up the aperture to f1.7. I'll go ahead and lay the camera on the back and the next thing I have to do is I have to remove this uh, lens nameplate. Um, I usually use a rubber tool to remove this but my daughter was playing with my tools and I still haven't been able to figure out where she put that tool so uh, instead of the rubber tool I'm going to be using my uh, pointed spanner. Uh, the name, the faceplate has a couple of slots on either side which allow you to remove it with a tool. Normally I don't like to do this but uh, it works. Uh, this one comes out easily which is nice. Uh, I recommend if you have a really old or dusty camera to put a little of a paint thinner or lighter fluid or even lens cleaning fluid around these threads before you start taking it off and that will make the lens plate come off uh, much easier. Okay, it also makes installing it easier. All right, and here we see the lens assembly and the next thing I want to do is remove that. Uh, the front lens group has a uh, aluminum uh, flange around the front of it and on either side of the flange is a slot that you can use your uh, spanner. Uh, a long needle nose uh, pliers will also do the job if you have nothing else. You have to be very careful when doing this. Not, uh, not so much about damaging the lens, but getting it off all in one go. So uh, sometimes when you remove, try to remove the lens, only this ring will come off and leaving the rest of the lens inside the camera. Now that's kind of difficult. Um, if you're just cleaning the lenses, it's okay. You can still remove it. You just take the dial all the way off or you know, the, I guess, ring all the way off, take the glass out, but then there's a second ring on the inside uh, which you need to remove using uh, a pointed tool like this. You remove the inner ring and then the inside uh, lens element will pop out and that will allow you to uh, uh, clean the inside of the rear element. But in most cases, if the outer ring starts turning and the, and the lens itself is not turning, what I'll do is I'll turn it to the right, tightening it up. and four out of five times when I do this, I'll feel the entire lens move. And when that happens, if I turn it back left, uh, it almost always, uh, four out of five times, it will come off as a single unit. Okay. And now these old Yashica cameras, uh, in most cases, will have a small amount of fungus or dirt or haze or something inside the glass. So I'll take my cotton swabs and lens cleaning fluid. I will charge the shutter as I just did and set to be, I'll fire the shutter and that holds it open and allows me to clean the insides of the lens. 
On the inside of the rear lens, I am very, very careful to make sure that I get it very, very clean all around the corners and also to use a fresh swab to remove any haze or any residue. I make sure that I get every part of the lens and then I blow it out and let the shutter close. Uh, the next step is to clean the rear of the front lens group and that's uh, easily enough done. The light behind me helps me see what I'm doing and also by uh, looking through the lens at uh, a light object, not the light or anything like that, but a light object. For example, pointing at the sky but not pointing at the sun. That allows you to see the glass itself and uh, locate anything which needs to be cleaned on it. Okay, it's nice and clean. I'll go ahead and set it carefully back in. And I start it with my fingers to make sure that the threads are uh, lined up properly. You don't want to cross thread these things going back in. Okay, and that's inside and I will snug it back up with my tool here. Not too snug because maybe one day I'll have to take this camera apart again, you never know. And I'll replace the bezel. Okay. And I'll reverse the points on my tool here. Okay, and it's all set. Uh, the next step is to clean the inside uh, rear of the lens and uh, pretty much this is like cleaning the other lens, quite easy to do. Uh, there are double elements in the back of the Yashica Electro 35 lens and on very, very, very rare occasions you will find fungus underneath the rear lens element but uh, where you can't reach it from the inside of the camera. Uh, the only way to remove this fungus is to remove the retaining ring in the back of the lens. But the retaining ring is actually larger than the light shields around the, uh, uh, I guess, around this, uh, you know, the chamber which allows the light to come from the lens on the film. Uh, you can still move it out by bending the sheet metal around here using this. You can see how this is curved. And by prying upward all the way around, I can usually push this out of the way enough to get the bezel off to remove the rear glass element and remove any fungus that might be on the inside. This is kind of a tedious job and it leaves a lot of paint and things like that so you have to be very careful and clean it out. If I saw one of these cameras for sale that had this particular problem and it wasn't really really cheap I would probably pass on it because it does take a lot of work to uh, fix that. Uh, I do it anyway if I have the time, but uh, uh, th that's just something to look for when you're looking at one of these cameras. Anyway, uh, that is it for this camera. Other than the light seals, uh, which I will replace later on, it is uh, cleaned up on the inside and on the outside. And uh, let's see it here. All right, and shoot it wide open. All right, sounds good. Uh, looks like it's good to go. I would put this on my shutter tester later on if I were selling this to um, make sure that uh, it's in perfect order and everything is within spec, but um, that's pretty much all you need to do to refurbish uh, the Yashica Electro 35 camera. Uh, so what we did with the camera was uh, I removed the top cover and cleaned the viewfinder, the rangefinder. I showed you how to adjust it, how to check the lamps for the metering, uh, how to remove the bezel and the lens assembly for cleaning and a few other things. I described how to replace the pod though I didn't actually do it in this video. Uh, I will probably make a video in the future uh, showing that exact repair if anyone is interested in it. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions about the Ashika Electro 35, please feel free to ask in the uh, comment section below. I sell these cameras in my Etsy and eBay stores. I'll also post links to my stores in the description below. Uh, shipping is taking a lot of time now due to the 90% uh, reduction in flights leaving Japan. I can get things out to most places, but you're looking at between two weeks and a month before anything gets uh, delivered. But um, 
in June, uh, from what I hear, it's supposed to become a little easier and a little faster. So yeah, uh, I pray that that's the case. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more, please subscribe and I hope you tune in again soon.